good afternoon everyone Michael soothing here with you again I know you don't want to talk about all the troubles going on in the world you come here to talk about relaxing things so let's talk about we took a trip to this place a day trip crater lake so I'm just gonna talk a little bit about travel and Crater Lake, but I'm going to reorient the camera and open this brochure and tell you about our trip. So hold on one moment. All right, we could talk first a little bit about the geographic location of Crater Lake in case you ever want to go there. Then we can talk about the lake itself, how it was formed. Basically, a big volcanic mountain like this, called Mount Mezama, exploded, boom, and left a big deep crater, which filled up with water and became the lake. But let's first take a look at the map that's in here and see how you might go about getting there if you wanted to go. And it's going to be a little tricky to show you, but we'll manage it. If you're coming from uh, Highway 5, the Inland Valley, you would come in on Highway 238, which would eventually connect way up here someplace, and then come in from Roseburg, right? And, um, yeah, it's a little hard for you to see, but I'll talk more about that. Here's the lake itself. Basically, it's in middle eastern part of Oregon and if you were looking towards the west coast this way Eugene would be up there about two hours away and Roseburg would be you know more due west about two hours away either way it's fairly easy to get to it and um, I should warn you, there are places you can go there for, say, a meal or something like that. But unless you bring your own food, I wouldn't highly advise it. Because if you were to go here, say, to Rim Village, it's like one restaurant there, uh, the Rim Village Cafe, and they char and the Crater Lake lodges there and they charge something like um, 45 bucks for their buffet a piece so you're going to be laying out a lot of money for a marginal buffet you know say a hundred bucks for two so i would avoid that if i were you you can take this road out of crater lake park over here and within about 30 minutes or less, you'll get to Diamond Lake. And if you go to the Diamond Lake Lodge, uh, Resort Lodge, there's a restaurant there that's far more reasonable, where you can sit and have a view of that lake, okay? Now, what did we do at Crater Lake when we were there? We did a few things. One thing is, we drove all the way around the lake on this extremely scary road where there are sharp drop-offs and it's very narrow. And RVs and cars come around curbs at you, leaving you no space whatsoever. So don't tackle that unless you're an exceptionally excellent driver. You know, like Rain Man. 
I'm an excellent driver. I drive on the driveway. Um, also, I would note that when you're going around the perimeter of the lake, there are beautiful views all over the place and turnouts and such. But you can't go down to the lake shore itself. It's very steep and very far away, except in one spot, okay? And that one spot is over here, all right? The northern part of the lake. There's a place called the Cleetwood Cove Trail. And it's a very steep trail with switchbacks that go back and forth, back and forth down the side of the slopes of the crater down to Cleetwood Cove, pure, beautiful water. There's a dock down there. But I gotta warn you, that's about a 700 foot drop. And that means that after you get down there, you have to walk back up 700 feet in elevation gain. Very steep, usually very sunny and hot. And so make sure you take lots and lots of water with you if you do that. Maybe a couple of protein bars. Probably, you know, um, a couple of liters of water per person. And, uh, yeah, I didn't go all the way down that trail because I don't have a super high oxygen level in my blood, especially when you get up here to a seven or 8,000 foot elevation. How I went part way down and part way back up to get a couple photos and such. But Joanne, that um, Sherpa wife of mine, she went all the way down to the bottom and climbed all the way back up the trail. And she informed me that it's quite beautiful down there. The water has kind of a purple tint because it's so beautifully clear and deep. And up on top, all the way around, if you have a sunny day, it's going to be the bluest lake you've ever seen. Very, very blue because of the depth and the clarity of the water. What else can we tell you about it? Um, let's go into a little bit more about what's around the lake and how it was formed. And they got some photos here. Here's Cleetwood Cove that Joanne hiked down to. Uh, sometimes they have a boat tours that you have to sign up for way in advance if you have any want to have any hope of going on the boat at Cleetwood Cove. And what it does is it takes an excursion from there over to Wizard Island. This is like the peak cone, the one big island that's in the lake. It's a very interesting feature uh, built up from the uh, aftermath of the volcanic eruption, Cleetwood Cove. There are some trails up high on the lake. This one's called Garfield Peak Trail. In the wind, it says they get 533 inches of snow annually. That would be the average. And um, what that means is you can't drive around the lake in the winter time. In fact, you often can't get to it at all in the winter time because there's just too much snow for them to keep this road closed. By the way, driving around the lake took about, altogether I'd say, close to an hour. Maybe 45 minutes of driving time, something like that. 
It's really scary when you get out to this part as far as it being, you know, narrow, sharp drop-offs and so forth. Big RVs coming the other way at you. Yeah. So don't take that drive lightly. You've got to be on your toes. It's kind of a white knuckle drive, okay? There are many interesting features in the area. They show you here the pinnacles, the pumice castle, Vide Falls. Uh, we went to waterfalls on the way up to the lake and hiked there too. Can't remember the name. I wish I could remember now, but it's there are a couple. Is it Tokitna? I think. Tokitna. All right, so Rim Village, which is down at this end of the lake, the southern side of the lake. Rim Village has ranger programs, lodging, very expensive, and you better get reservation way in advance. We didn't stay. It was a day trip for us. And meals from early June through September. That's because they have to close for the heavy snows in winter. Kind of like that lodge in the movie The Shining, right? Way up high, can't keep the roads open in the winter. So in the winter, you know, a guy goes crazy here and becomes an axe murderer. So you don't want to be there then, right, at the lodge. Um, and says, here's Johnny. I won't try to imitate it. Um, they have a cafe and gift store there, open year-round. That is when the road is open here to get there. Sometimes they can keep this road open, but not the road that goes all the way around the lake. Okay. This shows many hiking trails. This legend over here, there's like 16 of them. So there's plenty of places to hike all around the lake, okay? If you're into that. Remember, it's up at a very high elevation. So until you acclimate, uh, you're going to be out of breath for a while. Yeah, there's a park headquarters over there. And another, there's a place called Mazama Village which has a little grocery store and restaurant and gift shop over here. All right, so uh, let's see what else. It's 33 miles to go all the way around the lake. And like I said, you're going maybe 25 miles an hour, if you're smart, to 30. So it's gonna take you at least an hour or so if you drive all the way around it. Many pullouts where you can have views. Stop at the beautiful Vide Falls along East Rim Drive and view the mysterious island named Phantom Ship. Why did my flashlight just come on on my phone? Do you ever have that happen? It's crazy. Uh, what else? Okay. The mysterious island named Phantom Ship. A side trip down Pinnacles Road leads to the accessible Plokini Falls Trail and the Pinnacles, which you can see there. It's volcanic ash, spires of volcanic ash that got compressed and then sculpted by erosion. Other viewpoints offer expansive landscape vistas. Look for Pumice Castle, shown here. A narrow tower of reddish rock on the eastern caldera wall. When you have a big crater blown out of a volcano, it's called a caldera. 
You may know that from Hawaii, something like that. Please do not feed or disturb wildlife or tourists. Oh wait, it didn't say tourists. Um, yeah, this boat only goes, it wasn't running the day we were there. I think because of COVID or something, right? They don't want to congregate a bunch of people who are all out of breath from the trail. All right, let's see what else we can chat about. A little about the history of Crater Lake and that kind of thing. That's a pretty good rendition of the lake there. And it has a fairly accurate um, portrayal of the color you will see. Although, honestly, when you see it with your naked eye, it looks even much bluer than this. And usually high winds can't get down to the lake surface because of the big crater around it. So it'll be like a mirror, even on windy days often. Uh, how did a mountain become a lake? A massive volcanic eruption 7,700 years ago left a deep basin in the place where the mountain peak once stood. Centuries of rain and snow filled the basin, forming a deep blue white lake whose waters are of unmatched color and clarity. That's not just an overstatement because you won't see another lake in North America or probably anywhere that looks like this one. It's the deepest lake in the United States and I would add the cleanest water for a large lake. There's nothing to pollute it. It's all just snow runoff. Your trip to the rim to view the lake is a climb up the flank of this transformed volcano. Yeah, this is just one volcano, a very large one, in the chain of volcanoes that goes up the Cascade Range, starting with, you know, Mount Shasta and then going on up to Mount Rainier in Seattle, and Mount St. Helens, and you know, all the other ones, the Three Sisters, etc., etc. Mount Hood in, you know, close to Portland. Mount Mazama. I believe Mazama was the Indian name for this mountain. Just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. How big is Crater Lake? Six miles across at its ma maximum and four and a half at its minimum. It's about 2,000 feet deep. All right. It holds five trillion gallons of water. That's quite a bit. You could have a lot of glasses of pure water and not deplete it. The tallest point on the rim around it is 2,000 feet above the lake. Uh, did a meteor form the crater? No, because we already told you. It was a volcano that exploded. Why is the lake so blue? It's because other colors of the spectrum are absorbed due to the depth, so yellow and orange and so forth. But blue wavelengths are scattered and able to be seen by the human eye. Clark's Nutcrackers is the name of this kind of bird. Open white bark pine cones and they retrieve seeds for later meals. A long range line of Cascade Range volcanoes. This is a little bit of info on the various 
volcanoes and how they form. Lassen Peak, Mount St. Helens, etc. Um, how it grew for about 400,000 years. Repeated volcanic eruptions built the 12,000 foot Mount Mazama. Thick lava oozed from the vents on the mountain. Thinner lava burst to the surface in more spectacular displays of volcanic power. Glaciers formed and receded several times. And then it blew up. The most violent eruption began 7,700 years ago. A huge column of pumice and ash erupted skyward from a vent northeast of the summit. You know, this is like what happened with Mount St. Helens. Um, we happened to be living in Vancouver, Washington shortly after that eruption and that mountain exploded and then it kept on doing small eruptions for a couple of years we saw some of them lots of ash would come in the air sometimes it would blow our way and cover everything nasty ash it fell in new vents encircled the subsiding peak brought hot flows of puma and pumice ash and gas down the flanks. As the magma chamber emptied, the mountain could not support its own weight and it collapsed, forming a deep caldera where the snow-capped volcano once stood. Then it filled up, the deep basin filled with centuries of rain and snow. No streams run into the lake, so very little sediment gets into its pure waters. It's just precipitation balanced with evaporation and seepage. It keeps the lake level constant, consistent. Wizard Island erupted after the lake began to fill. Wizard Island is this conical island out in the middle here, right there. What will its future be, by the way? It may now be asleep, but Mazama is not an extinct volcano. It may awaken with a new eruptive phase someday, as the geologic processes that built the Cascade Range continue. Perhaps the violence of the past will return once again to transform this peaceful landscape. By the way, if you're planning a trip up there anytime soon, I would wait until next spring instead, because right now the big fires, you know, like the Cal, uh, what is it, the Cal, Cal Gora fire, whatever it's called, and several others have filled the Willamette Valley and the whole Highway 5 corridor with thick smoke. It's quite unpleasant. You'll probably get above the smoke when you're up at the lake, but it's really nasty getting there. We drove through very thick smoke to get up there and also had to follow giant fleets of firefighting vehicles that were going off to fight a fire, which was north of the, uh, the lake in a different area. Now this little Cascade Range volcano graphic over here shows you all the volcanoes along the Cascade Range. There's a bunch. They go all the way up into Canada. They start down here with Lassen and Shasta and go all the way up. It has to do with that big fault zone offshore, which is constantly putting pressure and subducting underneath the North American plate. And when it gets down deep to the melted area, you know, it creates a weak spot where the lava comes close to the surface. We could talk about that sometime in the future. 
how about the surprising secrets of the nation's deepest lake? Let's see if there are some surprising secrets. A midge fly lays its eggs on the lake surface. The eggs sink nearly 2,000 feet to the lake bottom to hatch and feed as lar larvae. Yeah, that's how the trout that are in the lake get something to eat. That midge fly thing. All right, let's see here. Research on the lake floor in Deep Rover, the submersible, found thick mats of bacteria down where there is an absence of light. Hydrothermal pools, unknown before, indicate the volcanic heat source beneath the lake. Thick bands of moss ring the walls at depths over 400 feet. Much remains to be learned. Only 2% of the lake bottom has been explored. Crater Lake's purity makes it an indicator of human-induced change. Studies show possible impacts of air pollution, climate change, we had to get that in there, of course, and invasive species. Let's see, who, after his first visit here, in 1885, William Gladstone Steele campaigned to protect Crater Lake, which he first heard about as a schoolboy. Steele's work met success with the park's creation in 1902. It's a federal park, by the way, not a state park. So if you have one of those federal passes, you can get in there without paying the rather high per vehicle fee of, I think it's like 40 bucks or something. The first attempt to determine lake depth in 1886 was surprisingly accurate. The Geological Survey, the Cleetwood Expedition. I guess that's why they call that trail Cleetwood Trail. Sonar equipment now records the lake's depth at 1,943 feet. These guys got close to that accuracy with a 1,996-foot measure using simple wooden sounding device to lower a section of pipe attached to a piano wire. So they were pretty accurate, even with that kind of old measurement technique. Um, what did the indigenous folks think about Crater Lake? It talks about that here. A place of power. Local tribes oral, oral traditions of the cataclysmic eruption closely parallel the known geologic details, including tribal ancestors who witnessed the event. You know, they would pass on an oral tradition about that, right? After the eruption, I need a sip of water, guys. After the eruption, the area became a prominent ritual site to the tribes in this region. The tribes perceive that spirits and particular powers inhabit the volcanic terrain. Private ceremonial activities, including vision guests, quests, sorry, take place here today as they have for countless generations. Instructional stories center on the lake as one of the most striking features on the tribal landscape. Government treaties place tribal boundaries outside the park but Crater Lake remains an integral part of tribal practices. Archaeologists uncovered 75 sagebrush sandals. There's an example of one there. From a cave near Fort Rock, Oregon, buried beneath a layer 
of Mount Mazama's ash. This find suggests that ancestral peoples witnessed the great eruption. Most likely they did because they have oral traditions about it. Dancers with the Klamath Indigenous Dance Society celebrate traditions and pass their culture on to new generations. Let's see, did we miss anything in this brochure? I don't think so. Of course, there's a lot more info on Crater Lake if you were to look on the internet and such. But I think for now, um, you know, if you wanted to go there, say, next spring, I would recommend staying somewhere in Roseburg or Eugene and then driving up there early in the morning the next day. Beat the crowds, especially if you're going to hike on that trail, the Cleetwood Cove Trail down to the lake. There's no beach there, by the way. It's just rocky, but there is a dock. And people do go swimming in the lake water there and fishing and so forth. It's probably the only spot in the whole lake that has any human pollution, right? And probably stays contained pretty much to that area. So they do have a restroom facility so that no one will do any of the wrong things in the water, right? Although when people have swimsuits on and hit that cold lake water, remember it's all snow melt, right? You know what happens, right? So anyway, I think that will do it for today's video. I hope this relaxed you. I hope you will have a good relaxing weekend and coming week. And uh, yeah, take care everyone and don't ASMR and drive. Bye bye for now.